are still Easter people. Amen. Amen to that. We made it. Now, let me continue on with our announcements. We thank you if you're visiting with us for the first time and come back. And when you come back, bring some more people with you. Amen. And also fill out the connection uh, slip on your um, bulletin and put it in the offering plate. Uh, give it to one of the us ushers. And also, they're not in the pew, the prayer cards. So if you have a prayer concern, fill out the prayer cards. There's a box outside. You can drop it in that, that box, that um, prayer box. And once again, let's give the men a big hand because they did an awesome job yesterday. That fish was good. And Chuck, I miss you. Amen, as we continue on. Grace is going to have a free concert with national touring artist, artist Mark Cross. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing the last name right. On May 2nd at 6:30, our very own, our very own by Grace will open the concert with a set. A love offering will be collected at the concert to support the Grace Youth and the Praise Band. At this time. Let's, let's get ready for the charming of the Trinity as we get ready to call to worship with all the congregation to stand. All of those that are able to stand, we ask you to stand at this time. Collect. Call to worship. Number one, five, nine.
standing for our affirmation of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born in the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended to heaven and seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. Come, come, come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Our glory, Patrick. to get nicer outside, right? Do you guys like taking walks outside, like through your neighborhood? Yeah, I love it. And while I'm out there, sometimes I find a coin on the sidewalk. Now, if it's a heads up penny, I'm for sure picking it up. If it's tails, I'm probably going to leave it, right? Because it's just a penny. But if I find a different coin, like a quarter, I'm going to stop and pick that up and put it in my pocket, right? You can get a gumball machine with that, right? That's good stuff. So, if you were lucky enough, though, to find a dollar on the ground, would you stop and pick it up? No. You wouldn't? It's just one dollar. It's only one dollar. <laughs> well, if you have only one dollar that you need to get rid of, I will happily take it. <laughs> it might belong to somebody, right? It might. It could be a prank. They could have glued it to the sidewalk. Hopefully nobody's doing that. Um, so sometimes, though, we look at people like we look at money, right? Sometimes we think one way about them depending on how much money they have, even though we don't really know anything about them. We should love everyone and learn that it's not important how much they have, right, but what their heart has, what they have inside their heart. So what can we do to show love to people? Be kind, that's fantastic. Anybody else? Um, open, the open the door for them. Give something to them that you think maybe you should have instead, but let them have it. Anybody else? If they're homeless, you can give them money or food and water. Yeah, if they're older, you can help them cross the street. You can help them if they can't walk. Yeah, those are all fantastic ideas of things that we can do. So when we show God love through our money, time, or talent, do you think that he's comparing what we're giving with what other people who have given? Do you think if I only put a dollar in the offering plate, he's like... Jessica, that's not great. Somebody else put $100. You could do more, right? Right, because he knows what some of us have, and he knows that some of us have more time or money than other people, right? So he looks at what we have to begin with and the attitude that we have about giving to other people. So when we give with a happy and thankful heart, that makes him really happy. So today, I'm going to give each one of you a penny. I know it's only a penny. 
But this penny is to remind you that in Jesus' eyes, you are just as important and special as someone who has millions of dollars. It's also a reminder that we should look at other people the same way that Jesus does, with love in our hearts. So I'm going to give you all a penny, and then we're going to pray, okay? You're welcome. All right. Y'all ready to pray? Okay. Dear God, God, we are thankful thankful. you see what's in our hearts and how special we are. Help us to see others the way you see us. Amen. Ages three to grade five. At this time, we can come to God with our praises and our concerns. If there are any names you like to call out, we ask you to do it at this time. I'm going to be the first one. I ask God to bless and unite our families. God, hear in my prayers. God, hear our prayers. God, hear our prayers. Whenever trouble comes our way, let it be an opportunity for joy. Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you. We praise your holy name. We are calling on you to heal our bodies, our souls, our minds. Draw near to God and he will draw near to us. In your spirit, we will not be beaten down. We might be knocked down, but we won't be knocked out. Easter is gone on the calendar, but Easter shall always be in our minds. Except a man be born again, He cannot see the kingdom of heaven. We thank God for where we are today, for this congregation, for this church, and all the committees that we have, Lord, that you bless them, that you direct our ways, and be with Pastor Ben, Lord, as he continues to enjoy his vacation, and be with the choir. We thank them for the great songs that they bring to us every Sunday morning. And we cannot praise God enough because he is the great I am. He is the beginning and he is the end. We cannot do anything without God, our Father. In order to get to the Father, the scripture says we got to go through Jesus, the Son. So someone said, I can't believe in Jesus, but I can believe in God. Well, that's another lesson for you to learn. But Lord, we just thank you for this day. In Jesus' precious name, amen. At this time, let us recite the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And the power and the glory forever. Amen. Doxologies. Please stand for our doxologies. Oh, give me a break here today. The devil is messing with me today. But you know who is going to win? Jesus Christ in me. Amen. At this time, we ask you to dig a little deeper in your pockets as we collect our offering. (laughs) Gotta have some joy in this. Oh, my hope is found in 
thankful for this offering. All good gifts come from you. Dear Lord, and from these riches we bring this offering. Please help us to use it for the furtherance of your purpose in this place and for the benefit of those in need. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing for our hymn of preparation. Ask ye what great things I know. Number 163. Amen. You may be seated. We are so grateful to the Lord for being here today. Such a beautiful day. Started out with a little rain, but we were here still. And now he decided to give us a little sunshine. So we are grateful. Amen. Amen. Our scripture today comes from 2 Chronicles verses 7 through 13. That night God appeared to Solomon and said to him, ask what I should give you. Solomon said to God, you have shown great and steadfast love to my father David and have made me succeed him as king. O Lord God, let your promise to my father David now be fulfilled, for you have made me king over a people as numerous as the dust of the earth. Give me now wisdom and knowledge to go out and come in before this people. For who can rule this great people of yours? God answered Solomon, because this was in your heart, and you have not asked for possessions, wealth, honor, or the life of those who hate you, and have not even asked for long life, but have asked for wisdom and knowledge for yourself that you may rule my people over whom I have made you king. Wisdom and knowledge are granted to you. I will also give you riches, possessions, honor, such as none of the kings who, have, who were before you, and none after shall have the like. So Solomon came from the high place at Gibeon, from the tent of meeting to Jerusalem, and he reigned over Jerusalem. This is the word of God for the people of God. Pray with me. Gracious God, we thank you for the opportunity to serve this morning. I pray your blessing upon each one of us here today. Thank you for loving us so much. May the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be accepted in your sight. 
O oh Lord, my strength, you are my redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, just to talk a little bit about wisdom and some other things, and we cannot forget it still seems like Easter. It has been such a beautiful time to worship and celebrate Jesus Christ. But I want to talk about just a little bit um, in my process for becoming provisional. There's a course called Clinical Pastoral Education. CPE is what it's called. And these are one of the critical items that has to be done in a group. And um, each person wants to make sure that they know a little more about themselves. They, uh, the group that's with you, they want to know about you. And one of the things um, that came up was the issue regarding perfection. Perfection came up and was discussed in detail. And I reflected on what my mom often said, everything in its place and everything has a place. And because she used it so much, that thought and phrase kind of sticks with me and enters many aspects of my life. For me, this is very important in all that I do. I like things in this place. I like to do the very best I can for what I can do. Some may consider this to be on the side of perfection. How many of you feel the same way? And may you take time to make things perfect as you can, that you do that. In First and Second Chronicles, the history of Israel is retold several, in several instances. It is essential to realize that there were different writers at different times, and we're in a different time and space as well. And we continue to read the Bible year, and the book, the first and second books of Chronicles speaks of perfection or the lack of it. It is still time, if you haven't started, if Pastor Ben would say that he put that in there right there, that you can begin to read the Bible year. It's an awesome journey. However, the message of the first and second Chronicles was one of the hope for the one struggling. They were reminded that God ruled over them as kings and related to them through the priesthood. There were ups and downs in First and Second Chronicles. The kingdom of Judah shows the need for a leader who could perfectly fulfill the role of king and priest. First Chronicles 28 and 9 gives directions for who will build the temple. And though David specifies in verse 9, my son Solomon, know the God of your father. The Lord searches every mind and understands every plan and thought. If you seek him, he will be found by you. But if you forsake him, he will abandon you forever. Take heed now. The Lord has chosen you to build a house as a sanctuary. Be strong. And David then gave the plans for the temple, its treasures, the upper room, and inner chambers of the room for the mercy seat. David gave it all to his son. Second Chronicle begins with the reign of Solomon, continues the history of the king of Judah to captivity and concludes with the fall and illustrates the monarchy destruction of the temple. It also continues the story from First Chronicles, which ends with David preparing properties and personnel and the operation of the temple in Jerusalem. While David desired to build the temple, God prohibited him from building the temple because of his involvement in bloodshed. Instead, God appointed, as before said, Solomon, David's son, to be the king and build the temple. From this text, God appeared to Solomon and asked, what shall I give you? And Solomon answered, give me now wisdom. And I think in terms of that word now, meaning he wanted it then. Now wisdom and knowledge to go out and come in before this people. For who can rule this great people of yours? God answered Solomon, because this was in your heart and you have not asked for possessions, wealth or honor or the life of those who hate you and have not even asked for a long life, but that you've asked for wisdom and knowledge for yourself that you may rule my people over whom I have made you king. 
And of course, God granted Solomon wisdom. Solomon's misdeeds are not necessarily mentioned in 1 Kings, only his achievements. Many kings before and after Solomon did not please God. It is a human condition for not being perfect. No one is perfect, and even the good ones are not perfect. What an opportunity to study the book of Chronicles during the following of the times of Lent and Easter. Be able to connect the Old and New Testament through the lineage of David. The book speaks of an implicit hope for the coming of the descendant from the house of David, a family still alive in the time of the composition of the book of First Chronicles 3, 1 through 3. The book looks to a descendant of David to reign eternally over God's kingdom in peace, which foreshadows chronicles Christians to see the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. But they only had a foreshadowing. But for us, we celebrate, celebrate Easter, the Jesus that died on the cross for us, the lineage of David. We're not perfect. Per perfection comes through wisdom and cannot come unless we seek and find him. We're experiencing the love of Christ and celebrating his death, burial, and resurrection which give us eternal life when we believe and give ourselves to Christ. When we trust, seek, and be obedient, God is pleased with us. We still need to seek him as he guides and directs us. Scripture says that this one thing let us do, forgive it, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before us, and let us press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus, crying into him day and night till we also are delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the sons of God. Such a mouthful. We all fall short of the glory of God. We look to do as God acts as best we can. I like things in place. Everything has a place, and I'm only perfect through Jesus Christ. We are so grateful for Jesus that there is grace when we fall short and we repent. We are additionally thankful for seeking, spending time, listening to what says the Lord for our lives. Essential for us is to see ourselves with a balance that only comes from God's grace. We pray that we love God with our whole hearts and beings. Through God's grace, we are forever grateful as we continue in love. We are thankful for this season of the cross, thankful to Jesus whose blood was shed for us. During this time of studying Chronicles, many kings did not please God. However, a glimpse was still shown that there would be a savior, the Messiah, who would come and save us. This is good news. God sent his only begotten son to save us, a son, Jesus, who loves us so much. Thank you, Jesus, for your blood, which was shed for us. When we give our lives to Christ, we are forgiven. Forgiveness begins. And even though we fall short, we must see ourselves as blessed. I hope you feel blessed today. Can you say amen that I feel blessed today? Amen. Now, the Savior did not say that being perfect means never making a mistake. He also did not say that making mistakes means perfection is out of reach. There is repentance. Perfection in this life is to be better today than yesterday and to continue to be a little better day by day. Thank you, Jesus, for your grace and repentance. Perfect, perfection does not mean moral flawlessness. As John Wesley meant it, he meant it to the sense of maturity. He believed that we could become perfect in love in this life. And Jesus invites us to seek perfection. Perfect love is possible. Sanctifying grace is the only work of the Holy Spirit that changes us so that our lives are increasingly conformed to the mind of Christ. 
This is a lifelong process. Sanctifying grace draws us toward Christian perfection, described as a heart habitually filled with the love of God and neighbor and is having the mind of Christ and walking as he walked. So, we are perfect? No, we are not perfect. It is what we can continue to do as God directs. Perfection is obedience to his word. Obedience is not waiting until I think I am good enough, but living faith and believing. He will bless us as we serve and tell the goodness of, our, uh, of the Lord. Perfection is spending time with God so we know the plan for our lives. Fasting and prayer continue to give us the opportunity to become closer and closer to God as he continues to bless us. Jesus, again, loves us so much. John Wesley describes genuine happiness that comes from living the life of God wants for us, seeking God's wisdom and living in justice and righteousness. Every aspect of, of the way of salvation brings us fulfillment. God alone satisfies our deepest desires. So we are only truly content when we seek God above all else. God would not need to send the Savior if we could be perfect on our own, and we certainly cannot be perfect on our own. Each of us have a plan for our lives as we tell the world about the Savior, the Christ, Jesus, who is our Lord. So going back to CPE, my colleagues initially did not understand what perfection meant to me. I think it is important that everything should be in its place and everything has a place. However, I believe in maturity and most of all loving God and loving my neighbor as you love yourself. Today, let us re be reminded of the grace prevening it and justifying and sanctifying grace that we continue in maturity with the help of God and perfection. Let's not forget about Solomon, who asked for wisdom. He sought wisdom. Let us be reminded that wisdom gives us the ability to see how God's word applies to every area of our lives. The wisdom which comes from God is the principal thing. Wisdom is the beginning of life and the most important thing. May we see ourselves with a balance that only comes from God's grace. God answered Solomon because this was in his heart. You have not asked for possessions, wealth, honor, or the life of those who hate you and have not even asked for long life. Again, Solomon, but he asked for wisdom, knowledge for yourself that you may rule my people who have made you king. Wisdom and knowledge are granted to you. People of God, God still gives wisdom. He still gives it freely. So as Jesus Christ was a shadow in, the, in Chronicles, we have today the opportunity to celebrate Jesus, his death, burial, and resurrection. The holy, precious blood of the lamb, born into sin, that we may live again. The precious blood of the Lamb. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, can we say amen. As we stand for another selection, you may stand. I think that's right.
May the peace of God go with each of you. Thanks be to God for such a beautiful day. We pray for you a beautiful week. In the name of Jesus, amen.